Right, welcome back to African Voices. As you were watching earlier on, we were just discussing about what Mr. Sibanda asked, whether George Weir's presidency is going to be a, a transformative and a successful one. But unfortunately, our two guests, one of them <laughs> decided not to go clearly, whereas Pastor Bazi has told us clearly he's going to be successful. Sibanda, I'll pass that back I'll, to you. I'll, I'll put Pastor Bazi on the spot here um, already. And this is a point uh, that uh, Taylor raised. Um, already we know that one of the first few decisions that uh, President uh, George Weah has made has had to be reversed. Um, and, and, and it's not just that. When you say decision has, has, has been reversed, um, uh, uh, you were saying earlier that that shows that he's listening to his advisor and so forth. But somebody else would argue mm -hmm. that that shows that his decision-making process isn't intact, isn't working as good as, as good as it should. You can't be making a mistake, a mistake so early. But hold that thought. You can't be making a mistake so early. That's one argument. But here's the other side of the story. Uh, uh, Charles Gibson, the, the, the Minister of Justice that's been uh, uh, withdrawn, in fact has a history that's clear for everybody. Yeah, he has been sued in the courts mm -hmm. for, for, for corruption <clears throat> or instances of corruption. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, uh, clearly when President George Weah uh, appointed him, made this appointment, he was aware of these things. Why was he ignoring that? Is he going to be successful if he ignores somebody's history like that? Well, let President Weah to tell us why he know that. But I think, from my own understanding, um, this is a coalition. This is a government that is, is forming and have come from a very, um, a very another successful government that has been criticized for many reasons. And I do understand that we always criticize um, leadership, particularly the outgoing is always the bad one and the incoming is always great. And sometimes they have, we have to give them a chance to prove themselves to be right. But we all know that Ellen Johnson did extremely well looking at where she took us from and coming to this platform. I would say it's, it's earlier to make decisions, but listening to the people is better for me to see that we go back and do it right than to continue and be stubborn and say, look, I'm not going to change because I've said this and carry on making the mistakes. So no, I think if listening... Uh, Pastor Bazi, yeah. the idea that he would change his mind and listen is great. But the question is... Uh, 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 President George Weah has got a university degree. President George Weah hasn't just landed from, moon, from the moon. He's been around in Liberia and he knows G uh, Charles Gibson's who history. Who? He knows who is who. And that's what his job is to get the best men for, is to get the best people around him so that his <coughs> agenda should succeed. Why didn't he just get that? Why did it need pressure? From, 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 from society in order to make a decision that seems to me to have been a decision that should have been made from the get-go. Why did he need that? Pres are we seeing here, are we seeing here an endemic African political practice where you're only appointing people to positions because somehow you have to, you owe something, rather than somebody thinking, look at, look at uh, Mugufuli in Tanzania. Clearly making decisions that you see are gut decisions, but are guided by a simple principle. I want to try, try to do it right the first time round, and I do not care what I lose. Why can't, why couldn't President George Weah do that? Isn't that a red sign? Well, that is not a red sign for me. I think President Weah <coughs> clearly said that the policy we want in Liberia is open politics. We want to make sure that we, we are working together and, and making mistakes and correcting ourselves together and moving on as, as a country. Mm -hmm. So this is a, this is a decision that he made initially, which was going to be confirmed when he took it back, to make sure that he said he's listening to people. From the conversation that they had, he's going to withdraw that decision. So I still think that is a good start. I wouldn't take that too negative because a good start is about listening and making sure that you, whoever is coming in is the word of the people. So if he has made another decision and we look at it and think where well, something may have been in the heading, that is out, it's better we start again and do it right than to carry on and, and say, look, I don't want to be seen as the weak person. Let's continue. In the end, it's going to be more damaging than what he has done. So I still commend him for that. Coming back and say, look, I got it wrong. Let's do it right. And I think we grow that way. Okay. Uh, let's say we agree with you for the main time, mm -hmm. because uh, like you said, it's good to make up a mistake yep. and correct it quickly than wait until later was when it's too bad. But Prince, if I can bring you back in, we've got about <coughs> 16 indigenous uh, ethnicities in, in the country. Yeah. And to satisfy all those ethnicities is going to be a very, very difficult one. Right. But one will argue as well, 
if you look at the vice president, mm. you know, who is the, um, uh, President George Weah's vice president, mm. there are lots of controversies that surrounds her as well. So you as a, a diasporan mm. who lives in this country, what's your take on the current vice president, being that everybody knew who she was mm -hmm. or who she was connected with, yeah. but George Weah still elected, uh, chose her to be his vice president, mm. and we all, the, I will say, the history that's surrounding her, but the people still supported George Weah mm. and still voted for George Weah. Well, one of the things I want you to clarify, if you say controversies, it would be helpful to clarify some of those controversies. Because clearly, from what I know, that she comes from um, uh, an institution or a constituent of popularity. Mm -hmm. And Joshua played this game very well, where he tried to look at the demographics. And that's what I was trying to give the premise of the Liberian political landscape, where you have the number of people that uh, are of eligible voters that actually make decisions such as what we've got today. Uh, uh, Jewel Howard Taylor come from a constituent. If you look at the uh, country, for example, from Lofa and Bonn, they hold, besides Maserat, a huge proportion of the population of votes. So yes, he was connected with Charles Taylor. Charles Taylor was loved by the uh, people that voted him. Many will argue that, well, he got elected because they were afraid and didn't want any for the war. So those are issues that can be debated. People still argue about the standard of life that they had on there. Coming to your point about the controversies, I don't know about one that you probably have to enlighten my mind on what controversies you think surround uh, Jewel Haber. But I think she's uh, she's a daughter of the soil. She's an educated woman. She's one of those women who's always fought for women's rights. And she stood her ground and supported George Weah to see Liberia transform. You are talking about transformation. And basically to see a new style of Liberia, you were asking earlier, what are we going to have another woman's president? Who knows? Well, had a stand. She's in a political line, right? just as any other man. And I think her role remains as such, un unless you define it otherwise, to say, well, these are issues. What are, what, where do you stand with these specific, you know, controversies? Well, I'll just, I'll just make it clear, like you yeah. said. Um, when <clears> I say controversies, I mean, like, as you said, during the first election, i.e. when Chastel won, yeah. uh, like you just mentioned, a lot yeah. of people were saying they voted for Chastel, or people would say, uh, people voted for Chastel because they were scared or that yeah. kind of thing. Yeah. But knowing that mm. she is the former wife of President Taylor or yeah. former president, yeah. you know, where she got married to Charles Taylor in 1997 yeah. and got divorced in 2006. Yeah. She was like the first lady of the country. Yeah. And Charles Taylor is connected yeah. to lots of controversies surrounding the West African coast, i.e. Sierra Leone and Guinea, which is debatable, yeah, you know. But... Uh, we're focusing on Liberia yeah, in so, terms of what happened in Liberia as well. Do you think she might be clear I or innocent? I don't know about any issues that Joe Howard is connected to for which we will pin her down. Oh, I can tell you she's a popular person. If you go into her Bonn County constituents, she's done several projects. She's contributed immensely doing her role as a senator while she was in the House of Senate. So those are reasons why people thought she would be someone that they can look up to for leadership. And just we are, I think, sent that from a distance to say, you know what? To be able to succeed in this thing, I can't do it on my own. I'll need people who got credibility, people who got the uh, votes, uh, people who can be trusted. And I think it is from those decisions that Joshua chose Joa Howell. And I stand to be corrected, but I think she enjoyed those privileges today. Joshua confides in her, and that's why they are working. There may be arguments that coalition is not working, but things I know. I heard uh, uh, um, someone uh, send me an article about uh, one of the MPP, uh, former, in fact, the MPP former chairman, the chairman emeritus, Sir Allen mentioning, he clearly said, Jobs were not issues that were debated or were on the table when it came to the coalition. So what I can say to you is too early to um, begin to analyze uh, the, the future of uh, the coalition or their leadership. All I can say is Joshua needs support. He needs advice. He needs to listen. He needs to connect and not only base his decision on appointing leaders or people to position based on friendship or partisanship. It is about the country. The country needs to develop. He needs to make sure that he tap into the limited human resources that we've got there. I've come from a human resource background, and I know how important it is to retain people that have got those key 
and cutting the skills that you need to be able to move the country forward. Uh, there are issues at the moment about appointments into different ministries and agencies, people who haven't got that qualification, but they've been stewards of the uh, CDC and want to be rewarded. I, I can understand where he comes from. There are different pressure. And so you ask the question about uh, the prospect of him succeeding and where he comes from. And that's where I asked him if he's going to reward those partisans, whether they are qualified or competent to hold a role for now, and maybe doing it in the short term, how much damage would that do to our economy, to our country, before he realizes that, indeed, he could formulate a program I to think, be able to help I, I think you've been talking politics all along. Now you're yeah. talking proper development. I think we're getting <laughs> yeah. there now. I think that it is important to recognize what you've just said, that... Yeah. Politically, maybe he's making some difficult political decisions and appointing yeah. people because actually that's how his coalition had to work. That's how he has to get elected. Yeah. And I agree that in politics, you do not necessarily do the right thing all the time. Sometimes you play the, you play according to the rules of the game yeah. now yes. in order to change those rules. rules yes. Perhaps if you say to me, he's appointing <clears throat> this people because that's what got him into power, that he got his vice president because that's what would make his coalition electable. That kind yes. of thing. There are many considerations. For example, yeah. he had to appoint somebody who was female because, of course, the president the who was just left was a female. So yeah. you've got to look like you're sensitive to those issues and you understand and you don't want to break with that past. Yeah. I understand those, uh, those, those modalities, practicalities. Um, but what I, I, I think we should be worried about and I think we should begin to think about is exactly where you are pushing towards, towards your contribution, which is that you understand your realities, you know what ought to be, yeah. but you live currently the world as it is, hoping that because you're there, you're going to push it towards the ought, towards Fantastic. the desired position. But, but, but one of the things that I think we should actually talk about here, which is not just a Liberian question, yeah. which is in many ways an African question, which is in many ways a, a global question. Uh, seeing the world, the world is drifting. You can talk about uh, Donald Trump and how he got elected and we're gonna have different theories. But one of the things that I think is important, especially for Africa, given that Africa is coming from behind, it's trying mm -hmm. to catch up from behind, is that um, every time a new president gets, gets elected, or comes into power. It doesn't matter how in Africa, mm. even if they come to power through the barrel of the gun, as Zimbabweans have just said, a president through the threat of war. Yeah. Um, uh, even if it comes to power through uh, 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 an outright coup, you will have millions and millions of people that celebrate and say the things that you have been saying here. Mm. But let's stand behind our government. Let's be patriotic. Let's let's move forward and not uh, if you are if if you and that let's support this president. Does supporting your country, mm. does supporting your country, sometimes, does supporting an African country, sometimes including going in outright position, opposition to that government from day one, is that patriotic? Or do you consider patriotism to be just us saying, we need to agree with this government for the first four weeks, even if they're going the wrong direction? Or is it patriotic sometimes to, is it, is, you can, can you pr practice patriotism by opposing your government? Well, patriotism can come in different forms and shape. It's about you realizing what uh, the outcome of your patriotic movement will bring. For example, we have the uh, outcome of civil conflict that led us to a situation that we wish if we knew, we probably would not have gone into. You have to redefine what one would call being patriotic. But I think the true definition of patriotism is loving your country and ensuring that that love for your country will move for the good of the people or for your country and not just being that selfish interest to call yourself I'm patriotic because you're looking for some savage gain. And so patriotism is about going beyond. Supporting our president is one thing, and that's where we come. You have to respect the will of the people. And that's democracy. Now we've got an elected president. If you are a true patriot, you need to support him wherever possible. You need to criticize him constructively to be able to bring the right result. You don't necessarily have to be in government, but make sure that you speak the right thing, not speaking because you want to get into government, but making sure you highlight those things that are key to the growth of our country. And I'm sure if he's one who's a good listener, he'll listen and know that you're telling the truth. So based on, yeah, sorry, on, Sibanda, on. based on what you've just mentioned, yeah. and as you and I will know, because what you've just said is exactly the way it goes in Africa, where sometimes people support it just for supporting sake or just for their own interests. Mm -hmm. Just- Which is wrong. Which is wrong, you know? But let's be clear here, because uh, if I can just move the topic for a bit, because yeah. we've got less than five minutes. You 
from the diaspora. Yeah. Liberia does not accept dual citizenship. Yeah. And many of you in this country and other parts of the world were not allowed to vote due to that law not allowing people <coughs> who has got dual citizenship yeah. to vote or to stand mm. as a Liberian president or as a candidate. Yeah. So what you guys who are in the diaspora, what do you want to see Mr. Where do? Because I've seen few articles mm. where he has started talking about that. Does that is that like a sign of a good change? Because he started yeah. to talk about so that, Pastor Bazi? Yeah. yeah. Well, great. Uh, sorry, Pastor Bazi has asked me to kindly you no know, problem. comment Any on of you can that comment on it. issue. Uh, that's one of the great things I, I, I admire. You know, one of the first things that we have done and I admire, you need to look at the benefits of dual citizenship. Um, bringing, asking people, you know, it didn't make sense to have us, even though it was it's enshrined in our constitution, that if you've got citizenship of another country, you cannot be a citizen of Liberia, which I think needed correction. And he's come forth in the right direction to welcome citizenship. And not only stopping there, but in fact, opening the door to anyone who wants to be a citizen of Liberia. The issue that I have though, is that of reform, re, uh, land reform. Uh, clearly there should be boundaries. Even in this country, you cannot buy land here. You can be citizen here, and if you misbehave, that citizenship can be stripped of you. And so it is across the world. Citizenship is about to give that opportunity so people can have leverage in doing, in delivering development and contributing their quota, making them to feel being part of the system. But there are limits to everything. Every rule has an exception. So I will ask President Weir today, great. We all want to be going home if we have citizenship of other countries. In fact, I've, I've, I'm born in Liberia. If you tell me, say, well, I'm not a Liberian, I go in and go to my village, you can't stop me from going to pick my planting and bitter ball from the farm. If you stop me from working in your government for political reason, fair enough, forgetting the remittance that a country benefits from, from people from the diaspora. But when it comes to land reform, there should be a hard thinking about that. I'm not saying people from the West or people of... Uh, a Western orientation or background should not uh, contribute there, but if they want to uh, uh, invest in our land, they can lease the land for a limited time, but not forever, not buying the land to own it. If they want to lease the land maybe to have a farm, they can do that. Yeah. But I will oppose strongly, to the strongest extent, to sell land to anyone from the world because we want to be inclusive. Are these, are these, uh, 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 Pastor Pazzi, are these uh, some of these decisions that uh, President George Boyer is making, including the land question that uh, Mr. Taylor is raising here, um, uh, questions that sort of um, fall into this category of uh, things that he's doing, that suggests that perhaps uh, as, a, as, a, as, a, as a former international footballer, he lacks political depth, uh, he lacks political philosophy, uh, and isn't that part of the African problem where you have leaders that have uh, uh, the support, uh, no matter how they get it, but uh, uh, lack in terms of political, uh, some political home, uh, philosophy, everybody, if you speak to anybody, even Donald Trump, uh, disagree with him all you want. He's got a, politi a political philosophy, which is, is that you've got to make America great, America first, America this, America that. But uh, President George Ware doesn't seem to uh, have uh, exposed an awareness of a political philosophy that will guide his sociology as he tries to run a country. Running a country isn't a simple thing. You don't do it with administrators, you do it with ideas. First, you must have an idea. Administrators help facilitate, help you implement that idea. President George Ware seems not to have an idea what he wants well, if Liberia you tell, if to you be. If you tell me prior to his arrival in politics, yeah. he didn't have an <clears throat> idea in the, in, 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 in the arena, I would say, okay. Mm -hmm. But from the time he'd been in Liberia, he, he developed himself. And let's just come quickly to um, as a dual citizenship. I travel around the world and I see and hear diasporas uh, talking about getting investment in their own country. But that's, that's an issue because they, they are not allowed because of the dual citizenship issue. And I think I agree with the land, land reform situation, but people should be given the opportunity to invest. I want to carry opportunities and projects into Liberia, but there's a limitation, even though I'm born in born Liberian, but we should be able to give opportunity for people like myself to go and do so. But, I, but, I think but, but selling land, selling land to anybody who has the money, uh, uh, that's that, that very should, that important. There should be a boundary. There should be a boundary. We don't want to sell land to anybody so because of the money. President George Weah seems to be slightly empty on philosophical questions. But you also have we to, agree here? You also have to understand that George Weah has... I don't want to understand, <laughs> Pastor. Yes. Let's be clear, his political philosophy is lacking in this respect. No, that's a presumption. 
You, no, you know, are you going to find anywhere in the world where somebody comes into power and is interested in just pleasing everybody, saying all the nice things in the world, and doesn't have a political base, a political grounding that says there are things you can and things you can't do? Well, in if life, that's the case, that say, happens all over Africa. That's the question. Okay. And if we have these new presidents, <clears throat> we must have people who have some philosophy. Yeah. People who say, no matter what the situation is, there are things I can and things I can't do. There are things we should and things we shouldn't do. There are things we can sell, things we can't sell, okay? That should be a, ba a basic uh, uh, grounding that should identify a politician as a politician. And this politician here seems, at least with this first very important uh, policy that you raise, seems to be empty. We've run out of time, but I think it's an important subject and we can pick it out to uh, <laughs> look you. at it another Thank time. Thank you very much. Definitely, <laughs> definitely. We've run out Thank of time, you. but it's been a pleasure, guys, having you on this important topic, talking about Liberia and Georgia. All we can say, we wish Mr. Weir the best of luck. We hope he will be one of the great examples of Africa, where Africa will be ruled by good leaders. Thank you for watching. Until next week, you have a great night.